get on. You know, the, uh, the, there's only two options for what's going to come out of the pulpit, two messages. One is simply awful, and the other one's awfully simple. <laughs> and uh, the one that's awfully simple is the one I like to, I've, that's my go-to message now. In the old days, we, kinda, we, mixed, we, we, we had a mixed message, not realizing how uh, simply awful it was. <laughs> Uh, so now we we now that we've that we've got the message straight because see, the, the the message that's awfully simple is that if it's all about Jesus, and what He's done, then that's the message that reconciles people, that gives them hope, that delivers us from ourselves, which is the biggest thing that we need to be delivered from, is actually ourselves, and that's why He came so that we could die with Him, be born again. Uh, be, be, have his resurrection life and be ascended with him. You know, last, week, uh, last week we talked about the final step that a lot of us really don't think about, and that's that we have ascended with him into heavenly places and we're seated with him. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places above most principality, right? Is this, oh, it's, what does it say? It says all principality? Okay, so we're not under the power of any dominion except the, the, the dominion of, of the God, the, the, the kingdom of God. And that's what we're going to talk about some today. Um, the message, if you have your notes there, and for those that are watching, hi, Lana. Um, and those that we're praying for y'all in Tennessee, and we're praying, and she's in Tennessee, and uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, Mary and Todd on there yet, but they're up in Missouri, so they really took a hit yesterday. Or, and so we're praying for all of y'all, and also wanted to let uh, Wayne know that his last infusion is this week, um, and so we're praying for that to that healing to complete in his eyes, um, where he can see all things clearly. You know, I thought about with Wayne. I thought about the the the, the prayer that Jesus prayed for the man, a man that was that was blind, and he came up and he he said, well, and he laid his hands on him. And he says, well how, do you, well, how do you see? And he says, well, I see men as trees walking. And so he laid his hands on him again, and he saw all things clearly. So um, the other day when I was getting ready, I heard pray without ceasing. And I don't, you know, I used to think that means we're just supposed to constantly, every day, all day pray. But I think what he's saying is don't ever stop praying. Right. Never stop. Never give up. God is faithful. So, so just stay in, you know, this is a good fight of faith that we're fighting. Because why is it a good fight again? Because we're fighting, we're fighting from victory, not for victory. That's, that's, why, that's why it's a good fight of faith. Um, I, I just, you know, before we get into this part, uh, Mark talked to me this morning, and that's always a good, a good thing. But I just want to share something. If you would go to, let me find this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's not in your notes, but I feel like based on what Mark said, we were, just, we were talking about Kathy. Um, and we just, we're, we're believing, and that's why I say, uh, you know, our hope, the hope we have in Christ does not disappoint. Right? It doesn't disappoint. Um, because... The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So if we, can't, we can't escape His eternal, uh, passionate love for us. Um, and, and I think it's so important to understand this. It's in, in verse, uh, verse 12, it says in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And that's always been a comfort to me. He knows me in a way that I don't know me yet. And that's a good thing. The Holy Spirit's bringing discovery to our hearts so that we can know who we are, know the reality of what He's made us to be. Our new creation, our new created spirit, it says that when, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is what? A new creation. He's not a renovation. He's a new creation. 
all the former things have passed away. And behold, so that's what we're trying to do is behold, all things have become new. Everything about who we are now is new in our spirit. But we live in a body. We live in, we're, we're still manifested in this physical body. Um, and so there is, there's, there's issues we don't know yet completely. And I, I, I like to, in verse 13, it says, And now, right now, abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love is the atmosphere of heaven. And guess where we're seated? In heavenly places. We're, we're seated in the, new, the kingdom of God right this morning. You are in the kingdom of, of heaven. And you have a permanent seating in the, in, uh, with Christ in that, in that position. Um, and so, but what I want you to see is the, those other two that we won't always have all three of these. There's only one of these that we'll be, we, we will forever have. And if you look at the word faith, uh, eventually faith will become sight. And that's why faith is, what is faith? It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, but it also is seeing the invisible. See, the Holy Spirit has allowed us, and we're going to see that in just a minute with what Jesus said, He's allowed us to see the invisible realm. To see, uh, we, has anybody ever seen Jesus in person in here? You've seen him with your spiritual eyes. You've seen him with your, your spiritual heart, your new heart. When he birthed faith in you, he's the author and the finisher of your faith. So when he authored faith in your heart, you could see him even though you couldn't see him with your natural eyes. And it says, according to Peter, that we rejoice with inexpressible joy at the reality of that revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? So in that revelation, we, have, we, we, see, we behold all things have become new. Now, faith is something that will eventually become, uh, become sight. So no matter what it is that we're seeing in the invisible, we need to keep seeing it. We need to keep seeing the, 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 because that is the truth. Everything that we see came out of everything that, that the, most people don't see, but we see it. And that's what faith is, is seeing it even though we can't see it tangibly. Everybody understand that? That's what faith is. So don't stop seeing it for where it really is and what it really is. Amen? Because the reality of that, even if, if whatever happens in this life, it says in the chapter over in, in, in Hebrews, all those people died in faith, not receiving the promise. But God has something, it says, but God has something better for us. There is a time where there is a manifestation. And whether I believe we're living in a terminal generation, I believe we're living in the, the, last, the last days, and I believe we're going to see a lot of things, uh, especially we're going to see a, man, more, a greater manifestation of uh, this gospel of the kingdom that's going to go forth. But then look at, you know, hope. Uh, the word hope um, is that um, hope is going to be fulfilled. All of our hopes uh, will eventually be fulfilled uh, because uh, Christ is the, is, the opt is the final answer and what we have in the eternal kingdom will always uh, come, into, come into fruition. We'll always have, that's why that hope, true hope, spiritual hope doesn't disappoint. And he, and, he, and he reassures our hearts because His love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. And one other thing I wanted to address, and Mark, you know, thank you for bringing that up this morning because I, this had been on my heart. Next week, I really want to, if it's okay, I want to talk a little bit about spiritual gifts. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. And then the new year, uh, we're going to, does anybody, everybody have a passion translation? Or, mm -hmm. or maybe, maybe you could ask Santa Claus for one if you don't, <laughs> if you don't have one. Uh, Big print. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah but large print, yeah. With large, larger numbers, please. On the, yeah, larger numbers, yes. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> we're going to, in, in starting, we're, gonna, we're not going to be here the weekend of Christmas, but the first, right off the top of the year, we're going to, uh, we're going to go in, I want to go into Hebrews. I've been looking at Hebrews in the Passion Translation, and we're going to combine that with the Gospel of John. And, and I just, I've just been astounded at what's coming out of I was talking to somebody in, 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 uh, the other day at one, uh, that I see pretty regularly, 
Uh, and I, I had given the Passion Translation. I suggested it to him. He was a real, he's a, he's a strong Christian man. Uh, and, uh, but he said how much it's changed his, his uh, uh, the beauty of the translations coming out. You know, when I, you know, when I said, I said, no, it's, uh, I think if we didn't have the other translation, it wouldn't be as, as enjoyable because it takes what we already know to some degree and it expounds on the, on the, 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 la the original languages and brings, us, it, brings it out in such a, an a optimal way. And so I think... A uh, lavish way, yeah, I, I, that's a good way of putting it. And so I think that we're gonna, you're gonna enjoy it because I mean, I'm just just astounded about uh, because uh, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews and I believe he wrote it he wrote it in Hebrew, but it's like and the and the, the author of the of the Passion said it this way: it's like a sermon written as a letter. So there's a, there's a sermon. There's a, there's such a beautiful message in that in in, in Hebrews, and it fits for all of us because most of us grew up in a Judeo Christian uh, uh, system, and and sadly to some degree we kind of we kind of sided on the side of the of the law yeah. as opposed to the cross, but the the new the old covenant instead of the new covenant. The old covenant is Jesus concealed. Everything in the Old Testament is about Jesus, but it's kind of concealed. Everything in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, is Jesus revealed. He's re being revealed openly. And so um, I think it's so, it's so wonderful to be able to have that, um, um, to be liberated into the truth of what the gospel really says. The gospel is the good news of salvation through Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith the revelation that he gives us of, of Jesus Christ. Amen? So that's what, it's, it's, not, it's not about partly about what we do and partly about what Jesus did. If, if it is, like Jeremiah was saying a few weeks ago, it's not, it's not the pure, pure message of the gospel. Grace is exclusively his. I, I, was, I was looking at this in my mind's eye, and I want you to do that for just a minute. If you see the two mountains that are referenced in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, the Old Covenant is Mount Sinai, right? That's where the law was given. What happened on the day the law was given? 3,000 people died. Yes. Okay. Now look at the other mountain, and you'll see that that's where the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And what happened on that day? 3,000 people got saved. Because the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit gives life. So we are, Jesus is a life-giving Spirit. We were born of the first Adam and we died. We were dead because of his one man's disobedience. All of us came into a death, death sentence. But Jesus resurrected us from the dead when, we, when he, he authored faith in our heart. We became born again. Amen? And so it's just such a wonderful uh, to keep this. And that makes the message uh, awfully simple, doesn't it? Because it's all about him. It's all about him. Amen? So... Uh, we're going to talk, I want to talk about it because I think that it's important. I think spiritual gifts are important and even going to be more important in light of the gospel of grace. Because uh, I was reading in the Passion Translation where Paul talks about, and you can read this in 1 Corinthians 13, but he talks about how important prophecy is for people who don't know the truth. Because when prophecy, the, the spirit of all prophecy is what? It's the testimony of Jesus. That's right. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit behind all prophecy. So it says if an unbeliever, what does that mean? An unbeliever doesn't mean just somebody that's just, you know, it, it, it could be somebody that doesn't believe the truth or know the truth. But if we prophesy the, the gospel, the truth, the grace of God, when somebody comes in and they haven't heard that, look what happened to all of us. What happened in the day that we heard the grace of God in truth? There was, I, I, I thought I knew what grace was. But there came a day where I knew the grace of God in truth and it changed everything. Mm -hmm. And I could never unsee it again. That's right. and, it, and so it was all about the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of the testimony of Jesus. So that's what we want. And that's what, what I, want to, I want us to understand is the body, the body of Christ. Understand how prophecy, how, how he says, you know, uh, tongues are for personal edification, but prophecies for the edification of, of all. And especially those that would hear something and, and in their heart back there, they're going, wow, 
It doesn't have to be, you're not having to read somebody's mail all the time. It's not about telling somebody. Now, that'll come too. I believe that'll come too. But it's about declaring the wonderful works of God, which is what they did on the day of Pentecost. It says they were all hearing in their own languages from these Galilean fishermen. They were hearing a, a, a perfect language that they had learned from wherever all the countries they came from. Uh, and, the, and the message was all of the wonderful works of God, not the wonderful works of men. It was all about what Jesus had done. And they were all hearing it. That was the prophecy that, that changed all of their lives. They came running up and said, what, 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 what do we need to do? And Peter told them, it's a matter of believing. It's all about Jesus and what he's done. Amen. So anyway, that was the warm up. Is that everybody okay? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm warmed up anyway. But I, I just felt like that, that some clarity would be nice to, you know, because we've all been, I've, we all grew up in different aspects and understandings about the gifts of the Spirit. Um, and I think that it's important that we understand what the Spirit wants to do with those gifts in our presence, right? I think it's, it's, a, it's something that we need to, to understand and use based upon the, the, the gospel of grace. So we're going to talk about that uh, uh, next week. Uh, and then, by the way, uh, we're going to, for those that, that aren't with us today, I just want to remind everybody we're having a Christmas party at Saltgrass. We're going to try to move it to 1230 from 1 o'clock. Next Sunday after the service, we're going to meet at Saltgrass right over here on the freeway. It's covered by the church, so if you want to come, anybody that's, any, any of the, anybody that's here, any of those that are watching that, 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 are, that are part of our group or just you know, want to be part of our group, come, <laughs> come to... Uh, Come, come have a good meal at Saltgrass and enjoy. But we're, I'm looking forward to being able to get together with y'all. So we're going to try to do that. But that's next Sunday right after, this, right after the service. Uh, I wanted to throw that. But that, I didn't finish with my mountains. So let's look. <laughs> one of them is in the way and one of them is the way. Amen. You see that? That's good. Okay, now if you're looking at them both together, what, what is the one distinguishing characteristic of one versus the other? Life and death. Law and grace. Law and grace. Amen. One represents the law that was given for what reason? So that every mouth, mouth could be shut and that the whole world had become, could become, become guilty and forever put away the hope that they can be righteous by their works. That's what the law was given for. They didn't understand that. So they said, whatever God says, we can do it. Big mistake. He didn't want them to say that. He wanted them to say, we can't do this. We need a Savior. Well, guess what? That's what's on the way. Okay? So what's the, what's the distinguishing characteristic of one versus the other? I can, I can do it. Yeah. Or G, and Jesus did it. And you're right on the right. Mar so what, what, how did he do it? He came right where did he go? But where did he go on that mountain? Judgment. He went to the cross. So if you see those two mountains, one has a cross on it, the other one doesn't. That's good. And so our way into the new covenant is through His torn flesh. When he, was, when he died on that cross, God the Father confirmed what Jesus accomplished for us to come to the throne of grace by tearing into the veil in the temple that was back in the... In the you could no longer come that way. The only way that, that you can come now is through Jesus' torn flesh because that's the throne of grace that provides uh, a way that, that we don't have to come through man anymore. We come through the man, Jesus Christ. Amen. So when you see those two mountains, that's the one that stands out to me is that the one of them has a cross on it. And that's why I can come to that mountain. Nobody could go to the other mountain. If you touch that other mountain, you're dead. Even an animal. If an animal touched that mountain, it was dead. That's how... That's how strong the law is. James 2.10 says, If you keep the whole law, but you miss it in one point, one time, in your life, you're guilty of the whole thing. So forget righteousness that's by your, by your works. Okay, I'm still warming up, but I'm there now. <laughs> Y'all see the mountains? So that's why we can say to that mountain, it, by, with faith, faith is a, re, is a revelation of Jesus, Right? Faith is seeing the invisible. Faith is knowing it's all about Jesus. It's not about me. So now when I, when I can say with just a, just a 
minuscule mustard seed of faith, which he authors in my heart, I can say to that other mountain, be pulled up and cast into the sea. That's the mountain Jesus was talking about. Because that's the one that stood in our way by get, from getting in the way, which is Christ. Christ is the way, the hope, the truth, the way, the truth, and the life is through Him. Amen? And the only thing that stood in our way was that other mountain. And before that, there was only tree, one tree that caused us to go thinking we could go to that mountain, and that was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That started this whole mess. And by one little minuscule mustard seed of faith, we can say to that tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, be plucked up and cast into the sea. And it will go because it has to, it has to be obedient to the power of the gospel. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. Whew. Okay, maybe I can just stop right there. Is, that, is, everybody, is everybody good? No? Okay. Uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God is with us in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, he's gone from being God with us to being where? Christ in us. The hope of glory. And that's the mystery of the gospel. That's the mystery of the gospel. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. You know, what Deborah was praying about the anointing that would be on our lives during this Christmas time. Go read sometime this week or before you gather with family, read, read John 17, that prayer. Uh, there's three sections. One he prayed for himself, one he prayed for the disciples, and one he prayed for us. And when he got to the one where he prayed for us, just what Deborah was praying earlier, he said, I want, I want the world to know how much you love those that believe in me. That was his prayer. That it would be so visible on our life that our family would know how much God loved us. Now, isn't that an amazing thing? Yes. And I say, I say Lord, you're, I, want your prayer, I want his prayer to be answered in that way. That when they would get around us during this holiday season, that, they would, that there would be something that they would see visibly on us that would say, you know, God, loves, God so loves that, 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 that woman or that, that man or that my nanny or my whatever, my papa or whoever it is, that they would sense that by the Spirit of God. You know what, in, in what you know, this is a season to be joyful, not just because it's Christmas, but because Jesus came uh, and, and went, went back to heaven and we're, we're seated with Him now. So the, the expression of our faith, our, our faith, expression of our faith and the expression of our face, um, there should be a shining, just like it was on, remember, remember Stephen when he was being stoned? It said that, that they looked at him and he said it looked like an angel. And they were stoning him. Because he saw him who was invisible. He had his eye and he saw Jesus, what? Stand up at the right hand of the Father. He said, he actually stood up to welcome him home. And so, he sh and so I, just, I just declare that that, that, that that prayer would come true for us when, we get, when we're around family, that they, would, that they would know something is different and that the Father loves us and that it would change our hearts to where our face would shine and, and be joyful. Amen. You know, it, it takes more muscles. It says it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. But I think it takes a lot less if we just have a little bit of the Holy Spirit active in our in our life. It'll change the way our face it, it, it appears to other people. Can somebody? Can everybody just smile for a second? <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, see, it, that's that. We have a lot to smile about. Amen. So it says because, and here's one of the reasons, Isaiah chapter 9, first section of your notes there, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, uh, and unto us a son is given. Thank God the Father gave us His Son. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen? But here it is in prophecy. And it came to pass exactly as it's written right here. That's why prophecy is it's so important. Uh, and, and the government will be upon his shoulders. Aren't you glad? This government, this is a new system of justice. This new government is that he was judged in our place. I like that justice system. Justice was served. It wasn't like he took our sins and just swept them under the rug. 
Jesus paid for them all in His own body on that tree. So it was, it was God. So now God is just in declaring us righteous because He made Him who knew, knew no sin to be my sin so that I could be made the righteous of God in Him. You see the, see the, the exchange position there. That will bring life to us if we'll let it. You got something? Um, just that phrase, the old debt's been settled. Yeah, long ago. Man. The old account was settled long ago. There's no more account. That, what is the word, Kim? Logizomai. Logizomai, reckoned. It's been reckoned. If you're an accountant, my dad was an accountant. So at the end of the, in the, end of the year when you put the books, when you close the books for that year, what's at the bottom? Zero. Zero on both sides. It's reconciled. We have no, there's no more debts, no more, nothing we have left to pay because he paid it all. And that'll change your behavior. If you, didn't, if you don't think he paid it all, you're going to try to pay for it yourself. And then you're going to get condemned or prideful. That's your only two options. Yeah. You can be condemned or prideful. Take your choice. Two great options, don't you think, about the death that comes through the law? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it says, so that, that's the new, the new government system that's on his shoulders now. It's not on your shoulder. That's why his yoke is easy and his burden is light, he said. Come and I'll, I'll give you... Come unto me that if you're laboring, if you're still laboring, and I will rest you. That's the way it really words it. It's not I will give you rest. It's I will rest you. First, he has to arrest us with the knowledge of the gospel, and then he can rest us. Amen? Yes. The truth will shock you before it sets you free. That's right. The truth will shock you before it sets you free. Did it, did it not for us? I thought, I, I told Deborah, I said, this, this is almost too good to be true. And that's what Habakkuk said. Habakkuk chapter 2 says that God's going to work a work in your midst that's going to be so wonderful that you're not going to believe it even if it's told you. And most of the, a lot of the church does not believe in the purity of the gospel of the grace of God. Thank God we're in a, we, we do because, see, this is important. You'll see this at the end. I've got to, I've got to get going here. Uh, and His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. What that means is Father of Eternity, actually. He's the Father of Eternity. He fathers us all uh, by His work on the cross to, to have eternal life. Prince of Peace and of the increase, and this is something to shout about right here, of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. So it's, a, it's an ever-increasing glory. An ever, from glory to glory. By what? By the Spirit. See, it's not by us. I can't, I can't you know, make myself happy. I, uh, I, but I can, I can surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit living in me. Because it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me, right? That's what Paul said in, in, in Galatians chapter 2. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He's the one that birthed it, um, who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's, that's the truth that we all need to live by. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, there will be no end th upon the throne. I know this is where I never saw this before last night. Upon the throne of David, and over, notice the word His there. That word His is capitalized. So that's not about David. There's a distinction there. The person they're talking about is going to sit on the throne of David, but it's His kingdom. Everybody see that? This is Jesus' kingdom. This is the child that was born. It's His kingdom. When He landed in, that, that, in, the, in the town of Bethlehem, Bethlehem means what? The house of bread. That's what the word means. And He is, according to His own mouth in John, John's gospel, He is the bread of life. So the bread of life came down and was born in, the, in Bethlehem, the house of bread, in a manger where we're supposed to eat. Yeah. Now, how ironic is that? Eating. You think it was just happenstance? Yeah. Planned. It was planned because that's where he wanted the whole world to eat was from the fact of what Jesus came in the world to do for us. That's, the, that's food indeed. Jesus said that. When you, when you taste me, when you eat my flesh and you drink my blood, that's, f that's food indeed and that's drink indeed. Amen? Because it has the power in it to change us. It calls us to change in a way we could never change ourselves. Uh, <clears throat> and over His kingdom. See, it's over His kingdom. 
that that government is, and that peace is going to continue to grow. And it's growing this morning. I declare it's growing this morning in our hearts mm -hmm. because it's important that it grows there. Everybody with me? Yes. If I lost anybody, you're looking at me kind of like, all right, I just, just smile every once in a while so I know, <laughs> so I know that I'm not saying something to, that offends you. If it does, it's okay. It'll get better. Uh, Matthew 6, uh, so what is the context of this, this scripture? It says in verse uh, 2, the people who walked in darkness, how many of us were in that position? All of us. All of us. Uh, have seen what? Those who dwelt in the land of sh the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Praise, the, praise the, the, the Lord. His light shined into the hearts to show us in the face of Jesus Christ what, where our salvation was coming from. And it continues to grow. Amen? And it's, you, you, you're increasing our joy, as it says in the next verse. So that's the context. Is that, uh, and, it, and, and it says, look at it, it says in the verse 1 at the end there, in Galilee of the Gentiles, by way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, in Galilee of the Gentiles. So he had us there. He had us in mind all the way back there, right? Anybody not a Gentile in here? Uh, okay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 in the NIV is in the second section of your notes there. But seek his, seek his kingdom first. Seek His kingdom and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. He's talking about, he's talking to a group of people that are profoundly afraid that they're going to not have enough. That they're not going to have enough food. They're not going to have enough clothes. They're not going to have enough a place to live. They're not going to have enough provisions in their life. But he gave, an, he gave an antidote to that fear, and that was, and I need to hear this. Remember, on, on, uh, Pat, did you all ever hear on the ship, now hear this, now hear this. Did you ever have that come through the pipes on the ship? That, that meant you better pay attention, right? Because your life might have depended on it. So if we don't hear this, our life depends on it. Amen? Uh, <clears throat> seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and every, all these other things will give, be given to as well. So all the things that we, we spend our time and focus trying to seek after can be supplied to us in a greater measure, and we'll never, the hope will never disappoint us because what we're seeking first is His kingdom. Now when Jesus, when He hit that, when He, hit that, when he was born and in in, in placed in that manger, the kingdom of God appeared on the earth. That's where the kingdom of God started. You remember when Jesus was, uh, when he was ministering, he said, if, if, if I cast out demons by the power of God, then truly the kingdom of God has come upon you. Because everything he did, everywhere he went, he was operating in the kingdom on the earth. And guess what he wants us to do? To operate the same way to be in His kingdom and operating as the kingdom of God on this earth. What did He say before when He was standing before Pontius Pilate? Pontius Pilate asked Him, Are you the king of the Jews? And He said, That was why I was born. That was the purpose I was born. But He said, Now, right now, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm here, so my kingdom is here, but my kingdom is not yet of this world. But it is, being, it is becoming that. Starting on the day of Pentecost, the church became the kingdom of God on the earth. Anybody believe that? You're part of it. You're part of the kingdom. And I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm to prove it to you. Is that okay if I prove it to you out of Scripture? I'm not, this is not my opinion. Jesus, Jesus uh, sent the Holy Spirit to, to bring us into all truth. And this is, this is, the, this is right out of the Word. Um, Mark chapter 4, verse 11. And he, has said, he said to them... This is the third section of your notes. To you it has been given to know the mystery of the, kingdom of, of the kingdom of God. To know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things he's talking to his disciples here, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn. That word turn there actually means repent. Metanoia, change their mind, because their mindset was I can do it myself. And, and Jesus said, no, you can't do it yourself. That's why I'm here. 
And if you want to be part of my kingdom, you've got to let me do it for you. Everybody see that? And so, but look at the, the key, and there, it says, and their sins shall be forgiven. So, so how do we know that this is the gospel of the kingdom? Because it's the gospel it is the story of Jesus coming and paying the price for all of our sins. So one of the, th- one of the main things that, they would, that, that metanoia would bring to us is the forgiveness of all of our sins, right? He says it right there. If, you, if you're hearing and you understand the mystery, the mystery is that I came into the world, and this was, this was uh, Martin Luther called this the devil's mousetrap because he would never have let Jesus be killed if he knew what was going to happen. He would have never let it happen. Amen? Uh, so the, the sins will be forgiven them. So that's, see, they, if they understood the gospel of the kingdom, see, that's the first, that's the first, uh, that's part, part A under the gospel of the kingdom. Your sins are forgiven you. Everywhere Jesus went, didn't he say to people, your sins are forgiven you. The man that was dropped in front of them on, you know, out of the roof, they tore the roof. Somebody, some people said it might, it might have been his house. Could have, could have been his house. I can fix that fast, so don't worry about that. Uh, but they lived, he said to the man that was laying there, uh, he saw the other people's faith. He saw that they had a revelation of him. So he said to the person laying there, your sins are forgiven you. And everybody in the room went, oh. And he said, well, which is, which is harder to say your sins are forgiven or get up and walk? But just said, you'll know that this is part of the gospel of the kingdom and I'm the king of the kingdom that's here to give you the king, the kingdom. Rise up to your feet and walk. And he got up and walked. What are you going to say about that? Not much. The Pharisees tried. Well, you're not supposed to do that. And sometimes he'd do it on the Sabbath day. And he says, you hypocrites, you went out, you take your, your, your ass. You know, I, I'm sorry, that didn't come out right. You take your mule. You take your, you know, if I said that right, in other words, I better be, you take your mule out there and water it every day on the Sabbath. And now you don't want this woman who's been bent over for 18 years to be straightened up on the Sabbath. You're a hypocrite. Because their heart is hardened because they, they, they want to have a system that works because they do it, not because He did it for them. John chapter 3, verse 5. Jesus answered this fourth section of your notes. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you've got to be born again to enter this kingdom. We get to be born again because Jesus was born again from the dead. And when He came out and ascended to the Father, now we have the, the, the ability, and, I want, and, and it's right at the end of this. Let's, let's go on. John 3, 3, I put them backwards because it makes more sense. John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, this He's talking to Nicodemus here, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So He says here that new birth causes you to enter, and the new birth causes you to be able to see. So if you're not seeing, it's, it, it, for those who can't see, it's because they're not born again. And he's making that very clear to Nicodemus here. Is that, is that pretty clear? It's a pretty clear statement there. So how do we enter the kingdom? The two verses I have in the parentheses there, John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 says, And as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. Not servants, but sons. Sons who serve because they're sons and no longer trying to earn something. You see it? It's not that we don't serve anymore, but there's a different motive. If you see a family business, the son has a lot more to gain than the people working there. So he's going to work a little bit harder because it's going to be his one day. Okay, everybody see that? Uh, if he doesn't, then he's not. He's he's got the wrong mindset. But if and then Ephesians chapter, uh, read this for yourself, just real quick. Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. Am I talking too fast? If you could see what's going on swirling around in my head right now, it's just. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 says, that in, in Him you also trusted. Where's your trust this morning? Is it in you or is it in Him? If it's in, if it's in me, <laughs> good gracious. I need grace, right? 
the, uh, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. So when you believe the gospel, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, which is also the kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the kingdom of heaven. Because he said, he said, the, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is within you. That's where he was headed. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Uh, he has rescued us completely. This is the Passion Translation. Chapter 1 verse 13. Uh, he has rescued us completely by the, from the tyrannical rule of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom realm of His beloved Son. So where's the kingdom realm? His beloved son. In, in His beloved Son. Mm -hmm. For in the Son all of our sins are canceled. Are you in the Son this morning? Mm -hmm. Don't let the Son get in your eyes, the S-U-N. Let the Son make Himself plain to your eyes. Uh, and we have what? The release of redemption through His very blood. So what does it mean to be in the kingdom? This is the mystery that, that Jesus said to the, in, Ma in Mark. To be in the kingdom is to be in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're in the kingdom. No questions asked. Amen. Amen. And He doesn't mind questions, by the way. <laughs> Jesus loves to answer. He always loved answering questions. Sometimes he answered questions with questions to the people who didn't really want to know the truth. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 26, Passion Translation. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise. Don't you love that? A secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations, but now it's been revealed, unfolded, and manifested. And this is the process all of us in this room are going through right here. This is, life, this is life in the Spirit. Revelation, it's being unfolded and manifested in our lives for every holy believer to experience. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want you just to know it. He wants you to experience it. Living within you. Isn't that, listen to these words. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation for glory or of glory. And that's the goodness of God. It's Him living in us that, that floods us with anticipation of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. I, don't have good, the, I don't have an anticipation of the goodness of God if I think it's depending on me and how good I lived last week. In fact, I don't, you know, I, we don't go there, but uh, every week all of us have challenges that make us think that we're disqualified. Anybody ever thought they're disqualified? Mm -hmm. That's what prophecy is all about. Prophecy in the New Covenant, we're going to see that next week, is edification, exhortation, and comfort toward men. The gospel will bring edification, exhortation, and comfort, or it's not new covenant prophecy. And that's what, that's what the people that come in the church need to be hearing. Not you better get your act straight. Don't, if, you, if you don't get right, you're going to get left. You know, that's, that's, what, the, that's what people are hearing. How to, but tell them, why don't you tell them how to get right? Yeah. Believe the gospel. How they've, been made right. how they've been made right. How they've been qualified for every spiritual blessing. And let the goodness of God change their behavior. Mm -hmm. Not the law. Don't put the law back on them because all you're going to have is worse behavior. Because that's what the law is intended to do, to, to make sin bigger. And it will, believe me. The worst sin is what? <laughs> the, wor the worst sin of all is what? Pride. Sin didn't start with us. Where did it start? With, with, with Lucifer. Because his heart got lifted up. So what does he want to do with God's great creation? He wants to cause pride to enter their hearts. So they can be, they can, I can be what I am by myself apart from God. Good luck with that. It's going to take a lot more than luck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, what scripture? Romans 5.20. Yeah. The law was brought in so that the trespass might, trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. You read the last chapter, I think it's 1 Corinthians or is it 2? Uh, the strength of sin is the law. So if you want to strengthen sin, make the law more and more what you feed people. 
feed people the law and you're going to strengthen sin in their life. Because the only, all, all the law can do is identify what it is. And if you don't have an answer to get rid of it, all you're going to have, then all you're going to be doing is trying to hide it. What did Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve do when they, when, they got, when they got busted? Put the, hid behind the trees and kept, wanted to cover themselves up. That's what the law will do. That's what the tree of knowledge will do. The grace of God by faith will take that tree away. It'll pluck that tree up and it'll, not, it'll flatten. That, that mountain will become a plain. With shouts of grace, just keep shouting grace to it. Because it's the grace of God that brings salvation. It's the grace of God that brings salvation, not the law that you keep. It's the grace that He gave you that will cause you to keep the new law that's working in our hearts according to Romans 8, chapter 8, verses 1, 2, and 3. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law of love, the law of faith, and the law of liberty. Those are the laws that are working in us now. And they will set us free from sin. They will do, they will do the, that will do the work of getting sin out of our life. The law never could do that. Or Jesus wouldn't need it to come. He didn't need to come if that was possible. But He came. Now I want, I want you to see this. And look, look at this. The mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a, becomes a heavenly treasure chest. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of, of, the, of glory. Anytime you see glory, it's the word doxa, which means the goodness of God for His people. And God, it's not just Jesus that wants us to know, but God wants everyone to know it. You know it's the Father's will that you be saved? It's not Jesus' will. It's Jesus' work. He had the will too, but He's the one that came down here and did the work to make the will possible. And now the Holy Spirit is the witness. So that's, the, again, the WWW, the, work of the, the will of the Father, the work of the Son, and the witness of the Spirit is the WWW that we all should be logged into every moment of our lives because it's a heavenly... You know, everybody says, well, He made us because He needed somebody to love. They, they had inner Trinitarian love from, from... Time was not ever was created just for us. It was part of our creation, not His. They had love for each other you know, there wasn't, there was no, <laughs> but he wanted, he wanted a family. And that's why we get to be part of, we get to be sons. And I declare the spirit of sonship over this, this, this group this morning. A spirit of sonship that knows who you are because of what Christ has done. That's the spirit of sonship. To know who you are because of what Christ has done for you. That's the spirit. That's the spirit of wisdom from above. Amen. Uh, and, and God wants everyone to know it. This, this is what he's trying to get through to our thick heads. Because the head is the part that has to be transformed. The heart already has. You're perfect and complete here. Hallelujah. But your mind thinks, no, I don't think, I don't really think I am. Well, the Holy Spirit wants you to know that you are. And that's why the treasure chest is there for us to eat out of. Now, I want to, there's a lot of people that want to say Paul didn't, talk, didn't preach about the, the kingdom. But look, that's why I put this verse in here. Jerry, yes. Real quick. Um, yeah. So, in my Bible, by that verse... It had a little reference to another verse, and so I just thought this was kind of neat because it ties into what Deborah said. Uh, it was Second Corinthians two fourteen. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance <laughs> of His knowledge in every place. You know, uh, everybody, in the, most everybody in this room, I know, I know, uh, Rana. When I first when I first got full of all full of the, I'm full of all of this, <laughs> you didn't dare bump into me because it was going to come jostling out, and I could not wait to share, and I still can't. But I'm not trying. I don't feel like it's my responsibility to try to convince everybody that the good news itself will fall on the ears that will receive or are not to receive. Amen. And let me tell you this: there's there, I have somebody that I've known for 20, 30, 40 years that I began to share the, this truth with 12 years ago. And he mocked me all the time. He mocked the, per, the, the things I was saying about it and the people I was quoting, Joseph Prince and different ones. And he came, and he came back here in a text. I just texted him out of the blue and he says, hey, by the way, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been uh, how did he put it? Uh, I've been... Uh, um, <laughs> no. I've been, yeah, I've been enjoying the teaching by Joseph Prince. 
And I was like, what? what? <laughs> so don't, don't ever doubt. You know, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And that word ashamed there really is I'm not disappointed because it may take longer, but if you just keep sowing it, don't ever quit being a minister of reconciliation. Don't ever think that it's not getting through. I know somebody, somebody over here said something about that, but don't, don't, ever, don't ever stop. Pray without ceasing. Don't ever give up on it. Keep, keep speaking the truth in love. Keep speaking the truth in love. It will come up because it's good seed. All it needs is a little ground to get a root in. And so I'm just so I'm just rejoicing in that. Uh, that really made, that made my week that, that week. Okay, Acts 20, 24. This is the Apostle Paul. And he's meeting with the elders of Ephesus. This is the last time he was going to see them. He spent three years with them. He rented a school building called the School of Tyrannos. That's how we started this ministry, the School of Tyrannos. Uh, um, and he preached there three years, two years of it, every day. They had church every single day. And I used to wonder, how could they do that every day? And now I can't ever find a place to stop. When I'm, when I'm up here, I mean, I could literally, I mean, if you had the time, I could, pre I could preach until midnight. And if one of you fell out of the window, well, we'd just take care of that too. And then when, he, when you get them back up from the dead, just say, now don't get by that window anymore. But he didn't start a healing ministry after that. Paul didn't start a healing ministry because he wasn't seeking, he wasn't seeking the gifts. He was seeking the, give, the giver of the gift. And so he went right back to declaring the gospel. He didn't focus on the miracle. He focused on the miracle worker. Amen. And so he's, he's meeting with them for the last time. And he says, so that I may, get, and he's talking to them, that, I, that I, I, I've not neglected to preach this gospel to you, so that I may finish my race with joy. Uh, that's how he wants us to finish our race with joy. And the only way we can do that is ministering the truth of the gospel. And the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God, and indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. So what does he say there? He's been preaching the, the kingdom of God. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So how did Paul preach the kingdom of God? It's in the verse. Testifying to the gospel of the grace of God. That was the, that was the kingdom message. So he wasn't, he wasn't preaching just about the church and the kingdom is going to happen in the, the seven-year tribulation. I'm hearing, I've heard some people that try to say that, that, that we're, not, we're not in the kingdom. The kingdom is coming to Israel during the seven-year tribulation. That's not what I'm reading. And, and, and they, they actually say that Paul never talked about the kingdom. Well, is anybody, does anybody disagree that this says that isn't talking about Paul? Not this Paul over here. He says some good things too. Uh, but I think this, is, this, is, this was such a, a, a blessing to me to see this. Okay, Hebrews, we're, got it, we're running out of time. Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, something just ran through my head, but I'm, not, I'm, gonna just, I'm just gonna ignore that one this time. <laughs> my random access memory will bring it right back up sometime. I'll, but uh, to, uh, verse, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, and we're going to get into this, and it's so awesome. But to the Son, He says, Your throne, O God, and that word, O God, is speaking of Jesus, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. So what's a scepter? That's, that's the rod that the, that the, that the authority, the authority and the, 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 all the power of the kingdom, and boy, some of those kings, and you know, they, they were so decorated and jeweled, and I mean, uh, and so uh, what throne is so uh, the scepter of righteousness? So when he extends his scepter to someone, what is he extending? Righteousness. Righteousness. The gift of his righteousness. The offer is his, the gift of his righteousness to you, and that's how we reign in life, according to Romans five seventeen, isn't it? Yeah. It's by receiving the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. We reign in life, not through ourselves, but through Him. Yes. So, when, so that's what He's looking to do is He's extending the scepter of His righteousness to whosoever will receive it. 
How many in here have received His righteousness? Then that's the scepter that's, that's, that's causing you to reign in life, is knowing that it's His righteousness and His, the power of His grace, of, of His, uh, you know, uh, the gospel. That's the power of the gospel. And what throne is Jesus sitting on, just by the way? What throne is He sitting on? The throne of grace. So what are we supposed to do? Just come kind of meekly? Does He say come meekly to the throne of grace? Does He say just kind of like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't deserve, I don't, you know. Come is that, boldly. Why can we come boldly? Why can we come boldly? Because He's already done, He's already taken away everything that would interfere in our coming boldly. There's nothing that I have to fear coming to the throne of grace. And it says that if we'll come to the throne of grace freely and, and uh, boldly, that's the ministry name. Uh, what's, what's the word? Parisia, which means boldly. Then you said you'll obtain mercy and then you'll find grace. The scepter of His righteousness is extended to whosoever will receive it. Amen. He wants to give you His righteousness as a gift. And then He wants to buy, when you receive that gift, He seals you by the power of the Holy Spirit into His body. And you actually, you become part of Him. You're enveloped into Him, to the body of Christ. You're sealed forever. You can't get unsealed from something the Holy Spirit seals. You are a slave of righteousness. Just like you were a slave of sin, now you're a slave of righteousness. Let that sink in. Because that will produce righteousness in your behavior as well. For the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not about a bunch of rules, but righteousness and peace and joy. Where? And what does it say it is? The kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. So we live, we are in Christ and we're in the Spirit. So you can't walk around anywhere now, Crystal. You can't go anywhere without walking in the Spirit, right? Because you're in Christ. And so righteousness, peace, and joy is the story of my life. It should be because it's, it's, because it's His joy, His righteousness, and His peace. My peace I give to you, He said. It's not the peace like the world offers you. There's no peace in that. But the peace I give you will cause true peace to come in your heart. Because I'm... Don't fear a little flock, He said, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's His good pleasure. He's not reluctant. He's not saying like, well, you know, I'm going to watch Him for a while. That's what's causing us not to receive. Because we think that way. He doesn't think that way. But He knows. Let's just keep the treasure chest open. How about that? Did you see that treasure chest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heavenly treasure chest. Let's just keep it open. Last verse. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, since we are, we are, we are achieving yeah. a kingdom. We're what? what? Since our, we're receiving a what? Kingdom. That what? It can't be, this, this kingdom cannot be, we cannot be shaken loose from this kingdom. There's a whole lot of shaking going on, but it's not about this kingdom. It's the one, let's read on and I'll show you what the whole lot of shaking is going on. It said, therefore, since we're receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, underline that word cannot, it cannot be shaken. There's not one aspect of the kingdom that, can be shep that we can be shaken loose from. Let us have grace by which we serve. That word may shouldn't be in there. Uh, by which we serve God acceptably. We serve God acceptably by grace. That's what He's looking for. He doesn't want us trying to give Him something. That's not what worship is. Worship is not me trying to do something for Him. Worship is me acknowledging what He's done for me. What can I give Him that He doesn't have? Okay, what can He give me that I don't have? A lot. Here. Here. He's given it to me here, but He wants to open that treasure chest up here. Uh, and re with reverence and godly fear. What does godly fear mean? Respect and honor. We respect and honor Him for what He's done for us. What a privilege it is to receive His grace. Amen? For our God is a consuming fire. I used to be scared to death to read that verse. 
What does that mean? He's a consuming fire. He wants to burn off all the wood, hay, and stubble in our lives. Because the only thing that's going to remain is the, is the gold, silver, and preciousness of His work. If I can let Him, if I can just let Him burn up all that stuff in my life that I think I'm doing for Him that's supposed to make me better in better relationship with Him, if I can let Him burn all that stuff off, then I can come to a place of, of, of true uh, relationship, true relationship with Him. My relationship with it is, is often because I have this wood, hay, and stubble in my life that I haven't let Him burn off. And that's what the consuming fire is all about. Sometimes I see it as any hindrance. Any hindrance that would keep us from seeing everything He wants us to see. What's a good example in the Old Testament? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Who was in there with them? Jesus. So what was, the, what was the smoke doing and what was the fire doing in there? Everything that had them bound. All the ropes, all the binding in their life, all the, all the stuff that binds, bound, was binding, binding them was burnt. But they themselves didn't even smell, didn't have the smell of smoke on them when they came out of there. That's what the, that's what the consuming fire is all about. Anything that's bound us to ourselves in this old system. I'm preaching today. I'm sorry. I usually do a little more teaching than preaching. But I, uh, this, this is just... <laughs> Matthew 24, 14 is not in your, in your notes, but just write it at the bottom. Matthew 24. Jesus is talking about the time we're living in, actually. He's talking about there's, there's going to be pestilences. There's going to be earthquakes, tornadoes. He didn't say tornadoes, but, you know, all kinds of similar stuff. But he said, at that time and in that day, he said, the gospel, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations as a sign, and then the end's going to come. So I've got some good news for, for those of us that, it, that are embracing the word of His grace, is there's going to be tremendously more and more opportunities for God to use us to minister around the world the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're living in that day. We're living in that time, the fulfillment of that prophecy, and I want to be a part of that. Does any of you remember that old song, you want to be a part of the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. I promise I can sing better than that sometime. <laughs> Paul's laughing. So I knew I'd get something out of him. Sooner or later. I can. All right, let's, let's take communion together. Let's take communion this morning. Keep that treasure chest open. Hey, Eric. Yes. Donna shared something earlier. We, she whispered across. Tonight on YouTube. Tonight? Okay. Um, the Chosen. It's on the, it's on the app. I don't know if it's the Chosen app. Oh, the Chosen app. The Chosen app. <laughs> is um, going to show the Chosen, the messenger story. The one that was at the theater. Y'all so probably can hear that, but the tonight, tonight on the Chosen app, the it's a free app. And it's a free gospel. It, doesn't cost, it cost him everything and it costs you nothing. Thank you. Yeah, it may not be on YouTube, but it's... And I, I just want you all to know, I, I see, your, I see your, uh, uh, your comments on there. I just love to see those comments. And I'm, I, do look, I do look at them. Sometimes Deborah will respond to them before I have a chance to... Uh, but we're, we're grateful to have y'all as part of it. We're, we wish that you could, any of you that, if you want to come in, we would love to have you be part of our Christmas party next week. <clears throat> what is the hope of His calling? Sonship. Sonship is the hope of His calling. He wants you to be... Uh, Hey, uh, and you, uh, I just announced that. Did you hear that about next week? That's the, the meal we're going to have at Saltgrass. Next week? Next Sunday afternoon. Uh, yeah, after the service. Uh, okay. Uh,
I mean, this is this is John chapter six. And he says in verse 54, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Uh, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. And so uh, what he said to the woman at the well is that the whole world is looking to have their hunger fulfilled and their thirst quenched. And he told the woman at the well, if you'll ask me, I'll give you some living water and you'll never be thirsty again. And see, her natural mind, she, she couldn't see the kingdom because she wasn't in it yet. But she said, well, hey, I want some of that. Give me some of that water. If I don't ever have to come here with a bucket again. She didn't understand he was talking about the Holy Spirit. So thank you, Lord, that this morning we have the Holy Spirit and we have a satisfaction in us that comes by knowing you the only true God, and that you are the bread of life, that you're the bread from heaven. And we, as we partake of this bread, you, you told us in Colossians that there, with this there's a treasure chest. Uh, there's a treasure, heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of, of His glory for us. So Lord, we thank you that, that you, you intended for this to be for us, what you did in your body. Um, and we're thankful that you did it. And we're thankful for your birth. We want to celebrate your birth. These next couple of weeks, we're so thankful that you came and you, you came down and you took upon flesh and you had to lay and, and you had to hang out in Mary's womb for nine months and wear diapers and all that stuff and live in this world just so you could take our place. Uh, and Lord, we just thank you for going through all of that to be our substitute, not to be our example, to be our substitute. And Lord. We want the effectiveness of your, your body to affect every part of our body. In Jesus' name. And you said in Hebrews, Lord, you said that, uh, that this new covenant, you're the mediator of it. When we couldn't stand in our play, in, in the place and make an agreement with, with God that could work, you put us to sleep and you stepped into our place. And you made a covenant as a man on behalf of man so that the only, the only chance of failure would be on you and not on us. And so, Lord, we thank you for the everlasting covenant. This is the blood of the everlasting covenant that cannot be changed. And, Lord, we want to honor you by being willing to receive this kingdom that cannot be shaken that you've given to us. And we have your blood that announces the, the eternity uh, that that is available to us and, and ours forever and ever. And we thank you for this, the, the quenching of our thirst that this causes in, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. I, I, hope, uh, I hope this was a blessing. Uh, it, 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 sure, it sure came out uh, in a way that my heart, I just, I, it's, it's, I heard Rob Rufus say this, that, that he's a quiet person and so am I. He says, but when he gets in the pulpit, he says it's like, he, it's like something else. The anointing that he was <laughs> uh, designed for comes out. So I'm just thankful that, that we have this opportunity. And the truth is going to make us all free. Uh, and <clears throat> next week, uh, again, we're going to talk about the spiritual gifts. Uh, and folk, the focus is on two things, love and, and prophecy. So just as a, as a teaser of that. And then get, you know, ask, ask, uh, ask the, if, you, if, you know, if you're too old to believe in Santa Claus, ask your, your, your spouse or your family or somebody for a, for a uh, passion translation uh, and we're going to start Hebrews and John the gospel of John and the letter Paul's letter to the Hebrews uh, the first Sunday in 2022 amen love y'all uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, see you next week if you want to come down and join us at Saltgrass please do we'll, we'll, we'll buy your lunch God bless you.
Okay. Sure.